What is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest arrows on this device and again this is the official build and there were one more build that was 14th April I guess but this is the 17th April 2021 build as of right now this is the latest build and here you can see the change logs and stuff but let me tell you flashing this rom and flashing the other things on this particular rom is a little bit weird like magic kind of stuff because you can't access your internal storage or something with the orange fox recovery at least and that is a bummer and you have to use a usb type c dongle or something to actually install custom rom or the components over here like magic kind of stuff then the anx camera here i have installed separately so yes if you are someone who is really willing to flash a custom rom right now on the redmi note 10 pro make sure you have a otg device that you can use i have explained everything over in that video of the flashing guide of this ROS. you can watch that before proceeding any further so in the android version section this is how it looks we have the ROS logo up top and the device of course is sweet that is the code name for the Redmi Note 10 Pro or you can also flash it on the Redmi Note 10 Pro Max 2 and we have the ROS version as 11 and here if you keep tapping you will see this is based on Android 11 of course as you can see again official build the security patch is latest of April 5th 2021 and here we have the stock kernel as the perf g kernel and the build date here is the 17th april 2021 again you can see the build number from here if you go into the system we do have a system updater but like as of right now i did not receive any more updates after 17th april so yeah this is the latest build and the default keyboard over here is gboard as you can see now let's talk about flashing the anx camera and why i have flashed that you may ask well first let me show you the stock camera this is the kind of camera that you get over here and i do not like it at all this is the old kind of google camera yes it works fine but i am not really sure how i do i feel about this camera this is a very basic old google camera that you get and that's the reason why i have flashed the anx camera 185r and if you want to install it there is a card right there and talking about the anx camera there is one more add-on that i need to talk about this is the rn10 pro add-on over here that you can download from the anx camera's website from the add-ons like selection and here this is about 2 mb and you can flash it after flashing the 185r with magisk and yes i have flashed this one with magisk too and while flashing this particular module which is the rn10 pro add-on over here via magisk it will ask you that if you want to install the version for the redmi note 10 pro or the pro max so for the pro max you need to like tap the volume up and for the pro you need to tap the volume down if you have a 64 megapixel camera that is volume down if you have 108 you press this one so you will get to know if you read the screen over there while flashing this mod over here with magisk but yes the procedure is very similar to that anx camera version 185r you need to flash that first then once you flash the like version 185R, then once you flash the add-on, you will get these kind of add-ons like in the pro mode, you will get this video and the photo option over here, like you get in the stock MIUI camera. So that works. But in this pro mode, I have seen one bug that if you try to change the ISO, it sometimes changes the lenses over here, as you can see. So yeah, it happens sometimes. Again, as you are noticing, it sometimes makes you like zoom it in a little bit but as you're noticing the like manual mode and stuff over here or the pro mode is actually working fine here you can adjust the focus and stuff everything works over here flawlessly with the anx camera right now but there are still some bugs so let me talk about them well in the video section with the like main camera you can only shoot up to 1080p 60 fps no 4k 30 fps option then if you switch to 2x you only have again 1080p 60 fps option then you can also go into the wide angle mode but i would say there is a lot of noise with the wide angle lens i am not really sure why and we have the 1080p 30 fps option for this and if you shoot with the rear cameras over here the pictures are like 16 megapixel over here in the normal mode and if you go into more and even if you switch to 64 megapixel mode over here i would say don't expect 64 megapixel pictures it is a bug right now that you are getting only 2.1 megapixel photos if you click a 64 megapixel picture so let me actually show you over here some samples and here let me actually go to the info as you can see i took this on 64 megapixel but this is a 2.1 megapixel picture and over here this is this kind of selfie that you get but let me tell you this is a bug and in the like normal photo mode if you switch to the selfie as you can see right now i have selected the 3 is to 4 ratio 
but once you see those pictures they are not at all 3 is to 4 pictures and here is how it looks like it's 9 is to 16 i guess and yeah the quality isn't great and you get only 2.1 megapixel picture again so this is kind of weird and this is a bug i guess in normal like mode over here and even in portrait mode there is a bug and the pictures in portrait mode looks like this just notice how weird it looks and i would say if you go into the info again you will see this is a 16.2 megapixel picture somehow but yeah this is simply not a like quality picture i would say so i am not really sure why this is happening but if you click for pictures in portrait mode this is how it looks and in the portrait mode with the rear camera yes the portrait mode is actually working and you can see the bokeh effect in the background and stuff and with normal mode this is the picture that you get and again if i go into the info these are the 16 megapixel photos yes these are working super fine and the quality is not bad at all so yeah this is how the anx camera experience is over here and while comparing or talking about the macro lens photos i would say the picture quality yes you can get like very good quality pictures let me show you but yes they are not as good as miui kind of like optimized over here in my personal opinion because you can see the focus hunting and stuff and this is how the picture came out to be and yeah you can take these pictures but i would say the quality may be a little bit worse when compared to miui at least so that was quite a lot of talking about the anx camera so let me just move on to something else and if you remember guys i did a test ufo thing over here on the review video of the redmi note 10 pro and there the fps was going about 80 to 90 fps and here just notice how good the fps is in chrome if you open test ufo website you can see the fps sometimes hits even 120 then it drops to like 116 118 so all the time it stays like above 110 so this is really good like you can see how much like it performs yes it did drop for a couple of seconds but yes mostly it keeps the fps like above 110 so that is really good and the performance you can guess over here is really a lot better when compared to miui pretty much i would say so overall in the ui i would say there is a lot of like performance improvements if you are like daily driving with the strom you will see a lot of performance improvements coming from miui of course and i would say the benchmarks over here are pretty similar to miui maybe but yeah the overall daily driving performance is great now let's talk about the charging situation over here well i would say the fast charging over here is like the similar experience that if the battery goes above 35 degrees the like fast charging rate drops so yeah those things simply happens over here too but here i have found one bug that is like in the lock chain in the charging info it shows weird like very less kind of milliamps and in the actual milliampere if you like open ampere and just notice the milliamps it shows perfect like 3000 ma over here while it's fast charging so yeah it, the lock screen charging info is buggy right now and one more good thing over here is that if you notice the always on display over here that like shows all the time it is not limited like miui that you get only 10 seconds of always on display yes it does not look as beautiful as miui because there is less options over here in stock android kind of roms but yeah the always on display shows always that is the best thing over here that you are getting and with the amulet display this is a really good experience to have the always on display all the time and talking about the fingerprint scanner speed just notice how fast the fingerprint scanner unlocks and yeah i would say the fingerprint scanner experience is pretty good so far i have had no issues so far with the fingerprint scanner and yeah it's unlocking super fast and super snappy now let's talk about the rom specific things like the stock launcher well this is still the ROS launcher that you get and in the stock launcher settings you get the allow edit the notification dots add icons to the home screen then show google apps show search bar icon packs you can add and change if you want to as you can see suggestions you can disable from here and if you scroll down we have the notification gesture the double tap to sleep gesture the swipe down to clear all gesture and stuff like that so yeah very cool launcher and to the left we still have the google's discover page of course swiping down gets you to the notification panel and swiping up gets you to the app drawer and everything if we are noticing is super smooth over here on the app drawer widgets are working fine in the home screen there is the like google lens kind of widget over here by default you don't have to add them separately or something also one more thing that i forgot to mention here that the google assistant works fine here i'm just shooting this video later because i forgot to shoot it earlier and from the corners the google assistant works fine as you can see also if you say hey google as you can see google assistant works flawlessly here even with voice trigger 
And talking about the quick settings panel, this is how it looks. If you go into the edit option, you can edit and add multiple toggles over here, whatever you need, like the data saver and stuff is also there. And if you notice, there are some app kind of toggles. Now I have added a couple of toggles over here. There is a dark theme, the night light and stuff. Everything is working fine. If we have the screen recorder, that is the Android 11 screen recorder. With this, you can record the device audio and the microphone audio at the same time. And here, let me show you some more toggles, like the reboot toggle is there. So you can directly reboot to recovery from here. But as of right now, the recovery is buggy. Again, the orange box recovery at least. And the screenshot taking option is there. Then the do not disturb hotspot, etc. option is there. But still, we do not still have the FPS info or things like that over here. Jumping into the settings, we have the network settings and stuff over here. You can enable Wi-Fi calling if you want to. And talking about the Vaulty calling, as you can see, you can see the Vaulty logo up there. And let me place a call and let me show you. In the stock dialer, you do get a call recording option but this actually does not work okay so i'm recording this but we'll see if it actually worked then we can hear my voice on something so yeah so as you can see in this audio it is totally blank it doesn't let me hear anything so yeah this is a kind of bug i would say the call recording option is actually not working but the option is actually there in the google dialer in the battery settings this is how it looks you can see the full battery usage from here and i would say you can see the screen on time you can definitely get six to seven hours of screen on time with 120 hertz over here not a problem and fast charging again is working but it is kind of similar to miui experience over here that if the battery gets hot it does not fast charge so that's how it is and we have the battery icon style and stuff from here you can get these many battery icons and we have the battery percentage showing up option inside the icon or the next to the icon battery temperature over here you can change the scale of it also let me go back to the display settings here we have the brightness level the dark theme and here you can also change the color bucket so i have been using it with the raven black works flawlessly night light you can schedule it and adaptive brightness is there inside styles and wallpapers we have these many wallpapers over here as you can see this is a stock wallpaper that you get i have changed it to a uh, wallp apps wallpaper i'll list that below and in the styles you can customize the theme over here if you want to so if you want uh, like font over here you can choose the fonts and you can choose the icons then we have these many accent colors as you can see plethora of accent colors are actually there so you can create a custom theme as you're liking inside grid we have up to six by six option and in the clock settings these many clocks that you get up to we have the ide and the fluid option i have been using it with the fluid and these many like the always on display clocks or the lock screen clocks that you get there is a screen timeout option. You can set it up to 30 minutes if you want to. Auto rotated screen is there. Then the colors, you have to set it to boosted. Otherwise, with adaptive, the colors are not that great. If you're noticing, if I switch to adaptive, this picture becomes a little bit less saturated. So, yeah, the natural and boosted is fine, but the adaptive one is just dull, in my opinion. And in the lock screen settings, we have the show lockdown option, skip lock screen, and the notifications on lock screen and stuff. Then if we scroll down, we have the lock screen charging info, display media cover art, and we have the screen of animation too. You can change it to CRT or scale. But one thing from ArrowOS is missing is that the always unlock with the fingerprint scanner is just not here. It might be present in the future updates, but as of right now, the always unlock or the force fingerprint option is just missing. Double tap to wake is there and it is working fine and enable blurs option is there for the UI. Font size, display size, you can customize and even the DPI you can customize. Then we have the weather customization. We have the status bar items from here. You can enable the headset, Bluetooth, etc. icons, even the vault team, mobile data, everything else. And there is the refresh rate option. So with this, as you can see, we have the switch your display refresh rate. You can switch it to 60 Hertz if you want to. But here by default, it is set to 120 Hertz. So that is great. In the sound settings, this is how the media call, etc. volumes over here look. And we have the link, ringtone, notification, volume, etc. Then show volume panel on the left side is there. And this is how the volume panel looks. And you can expand the volume panel just like this, as you can see. And of course, you can adjust the volumes just like this. Do not disturb, live caption, etc. options are there. And there is a touch vibration, touch sound, etc and in-call vibrations are also there and they do work fine. As of right now, there is no me audio dirac over here. Jumping into the security, we also have the face unlock and the app lock too over here. This is how the app lock interface looks like and we have the like locking mechanism. Like you can just tap on this lock icon or unlock icon over here that will lock the app. And if you see these blue icons over here, that means those apps are completely locked. And there is a lock after over here that says lock instantly and then 15 seconds and the screen off so you can put it to 15 seconds if you don't like to unlock them like quite often 
so yeah these options are there and the app lock simply works great let me show you here as you can see this is how the app locks interface looks like you can also use the face unlock if you want to with this or touch the fingerprint scanner or use the pin and here as you can see you can unlock the app just right away over here let me set up the face unlock quickly and let me show you how fast it works i hope it recognizes because there are a lot of obstacle in front of my face let me just double tap over here and double tap to wake and as you can see it unlocks right away let me double tap one more time so this is very fast face unlocking over here let me show you one more time i'm not tapping the fingerprint scanner on the right so here let me try again so yeah, the face unlocking speed is flawlessly fast and it is working 100% of the time. Now in the button section, we have the enable advanced restart, then the power menu actions are also there and invert layout option is there, playback control, volume, wake, etc. is there. And again, this is how the power menu looks like. And if you tap on restart, you get the like directly rebooting option to recovery or fast boot from here. And in the power menu, you also get the like smart home kind of controls over here if you need those. And in the gestures, we have the quickly open camera. So you can double press the power button to actually open the camera quickly if you want that feature. Let me go back. We have the activate the torch option. Long pressing the power button does toggle the torch, but the torch is simply very tiny. So yeah, I'm not really sure if you'd use that that often. In the gestures navigation, we have the full screen gestures of the UI. And if you go into the settings, we have the gesture bar length customization and that's it. You cannot increase the thickness of this gesture bar over here, but yes, you can increase the size of it. And we have the two button and three button navigation over here too. Let me go back. We have the power menu options, sensitive content and stuff. Double tap to sleep on the status bar is also there. So you can double tap on the status bar and that works flawlessly. Let me go back. So that's it for the settings over here. Now let's talk about a few other things like the DRM info certification and stuff. Well, the DRM info stays L1 as you can see. So you should not worry about the DRM certification over here and you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos, internet AP, even if you switch to the Arrow OS. And if you're noticing it passes the safety net test right out of the box and you can use banking apps like Google Pay over here without any issues. But even if you install Magisk, just follow that ANX camera flashing guide video. You, you will get to know how did I get these like safety net working. I have also the SBI card app working over here. For that, you need to do a tweak in Magisk. I have showed everything in that video. And talking about the IR Blaster present on the device, as you're noticing the IR Blaster is working fine. I have tested it with the LED RGB remote app and also the Mi remote app both are working fine here if you're noticing the ir blaster actually works flawlessly no issues but by default i would say the sound quality via the headphone jack and bluetooth as well is great over here i've tested both both are working fine here no issues so far but i did notice some problem while doing some video calls and stuff here i would say in whatsapp calling or like any other apps calling you will see a little bit of halo effect because this front camera is so small and like sometimes in MIUI, there is a black border, like a software kind of black border in the camera while you're using a video call or something or while you're using the front camera. So that thing like helps to keep your face like normal, but you can see a vignette or halo effect over here because all the lights, if you increase the brightness of the screen, it glows on your video side. So yes, the other person will see a little bit of halo effect on your face while doing video calling or something that might be the case. So you need to be aware of that. Now, let me talk about some other things like the whole UI, even in YouTube, as you can see, it is a very fast and snappy experience over here. No issues that I have had so far. And talking about the speakers over here, yes, the dual speakers are working flawlessly, no issues. And in this, like while changing the video resolution or something, I do not see any kind of lag or stutters over here in the UI. I saw that sometimes in MIUI, but here I do not see the lags or something while I'm switching the resolution and stuff. UI is a very, very smooth. I would say this is one of the smoothest experience that I have had on this device. And with a custom ROM, it's just a breeze and it is a lot better of experience over here when compared to MIUI in my personal opinion. The overall daily driving performance is like flawless over here. I have had no issues so far. And talking about the fingerprint gestures over here, I would say, yes, they are completely missing. Coming from UI, you might miss that. And here double tapping on the fingerprint scanner does not open anything. So you can't actually like use that feature. Maybe in future we will get those features in custom ROM. But as of right now, the fingerprint scanner double tapping or something that opened the camera or took a screenshot in MIUI, those features are just missing from here. But we do have this swipe rec screenshot feature. So yes, this swipe rec screenshot is actually working flawlessly well. 
and yes it works fine but there is no option to actually like use the long screenshot or something there is only share edit and delete option over here and this is how the recent panel looks like you can take a screenshot then clear all the apps or if you want to go split screen you can go from here right now let me open a couple of apps over here so that i can show you the app owner speed and the ram management on this rom let's open twitter right now let's open play store now let's open instagram also let's open spotify as well now let's open google home this is the 6gb 128gb variant over here by the way let's open amazon now let's open flipkart the me home the me store and now let's open me fit app right now here i have all the apps in the recent panel as you can see so let's actually try to open the first app that is the chrome yes it is still in memory now okay so i did not open youtube so i'll open that as well i forgot to open the youtube app so right now let's open the apps over here like spotify as you can see works fine right now let's open amazon yes it is still in memory now let's open this me home app still in memory now what else should i open play store yes still in memory so you can see like with stock android or with ros or with any other custom rom the memory management will be a lot better when compared to me why and when i said that it removed twitter i guess from memory it reloaded or something i'm not really sure let's open something else like instagram okay so it reloaded too so pretty much i should not have done that much boasting i guess but yeah i would say like with normal daily driving you will see the ram management is better when compared to me why pretty much let's open google home yes still in memory facebook still in memory instagram is in memory spotify is still in memory twitter again is in memory amazon amazon was removed now flipkart flipkart was removed too so yes couple of apps like five to six apps it can keep in memory but not more than that i guess was it worth it switching to a custom rom from miui if you ask me personally i would say 100% it was worth it but again you have to remember that a camera situation is not the best over here the redmi note 10 pro has great cameras and the custom rom needs time like the custom rom development needs time to actually like optimize the cameras over here you have to wait for that for a couple of months but in my frank opinion the developers has done a amazing job on the ROS for the Redmi Note 10 Pro so it is still very early for the ROS for the Redmi Note 10 Pro it was totally worth it switching to a custom rom on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and let me know in the comments what do you guys think about this video give this video a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you have not yet please share this video if you want them to know about the latest ROS on the Redmi Note 10 Pro is just rocking so this is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one bye bye now